Hi everyone, Knoopsy here. iPadOS 15 is finally official, it's here, and there are plenty of new features as well as updates to previous ones. But there are also a lot of things we didn't get this year that many of us were hoping for. But this video isn't going to be about me complaining about features I wish the iPad Pro had. This video is about how iPadOS 15 pairs with the new M1 2021 iPad Pro. And these are my thoughts. Today's video is brought to you by HP Plus, the free upgrade that makes HP printers even smarter. With perks like 6 free months of instant ink delivery, 24-7 security, HP smart app upgrades, and so much more. Learn more about HP Plus at the link in the description. Okay, so this is of course a beta version of iPadOS 15 that I probably wouldn't recommend installing on your main device, or even really installing at all, unless you're a developer, you're just really curious, or you have a lot of patience. There are some bugs, but that's expected with such an early beta version of the software. But we're going to look past that and focus on the overall experience as well as some of the new features that iPadOS brings this year. The biggest feature this year is the updated multitasking. Now, split screen on iPad has always been kind of okay, but this year things are much better and the software is actually much more encouraging and makes it easier to multitask on the iPad. So there's effectively five ways to actually trigger split screen multitasking in iPadOS 15. Let's go through them. So the first way is swiping up from the dock and dragging a second app in just as you would normally do. There's also going from the app library and dragging a second app in from there. You can also select the three dots at the top of apps and slide to the right or to the left and then tap an app on your home screen directly. You can also go into your multitasking view and drag two app windows together. And kind of the final way is to use keyboard shortcuts to open multitasking and swap between windows just like that. Much easier all around. You can also of course still have one floating side window and a floating video all at once, nothing has really changed there. So Apple didn't really update multitasking this year with things like floating windows or more split screen windows, nothing like that. What they've pretty much done is made multitasking easier to use and easier to trigger. And that's pretty much it. That alone though makes multitasking on iPad infinitely better than it was, because before it was pretty much a chore to do more than one thing, but now it's much more simple. And tapping those three dots at the top lets you easily rearrange your window placements. The other notable feature is called Quick Note. Swiping in from the bottom right of the screen with the Apple Pencil brings in a mini floating note that is actually resizable by pinching and zooming or using a trackpad, and it's kinda great. This is exactly how Apple should do floating windows on iPadOS. Imagine this with any app. They scale well, they hide easily when you don't want to use these floating windows. This is the move. It's infinitely better than SlideOver ever was on iPad. But basically this is a way to make Apple's Notes app more efficient for quick thoughts. You can type, drag and drop links, images, media, handwrite, draw, it's solid. Just throwing in key info and things you don't want to forget easily into one place. Now, something pretty cool and also fairly underrated is the ability to actually drag text from an image to notes or really any other app. Like if you take a photo of a book or a poster or a JPEG or even a screenshot or even a handwritten note, it essentially takes the words and converts them into editable text that you can copy and paste into a document. That's kind of sick. So here are some practical examples. Most of these relate to school, but you can pretty much use these no matter how you live with your iPad. For example, you want to copy a section of text from a book, or notes from a whiteboard, or convert a note that you wrote on paper into actual type text that you can edit, print, email, or add it to another document. This is the way to do it all. You can also use Spotlight Search to find lines of text in a photo from your Photos app. So that's kind of fire. Safari also received a few updates, mostly to the user interface, that make it far more complex than it actually needs to be. This new tab design looks good, but actually using it, it's just kind of annoying. You can now actually group tabs though, which is kind of sweet. Plus, you can also now install extensions into Safari, like Honey for example. Not a sponsor. And the home screen also received a much needed update enabling widgets always on screen, and almost anywhere on screen they can be placed. The swipe over today view is still kind of here, just not fixed on your home screen anymore. So you can still put widgets you want quick access to, but don't want cluttering your desktop. 
Taking advantage of the huge iPad screen with all these widgets, that's kind of sick. But the empty, unusable space in the sides of the screen, that feels kind of weird, like the spacing is off or something, I don't know. And while we can't pin individual files to the desktop, the files widget is the closest thing to that. And the biggest size of this widget is, uh, it's pretty big. It shows recent files from most apps, and it's kind of the closest we're going to get to a traditional desktop user interface on the iPad. Apple also brought the app library to the iPad as well from the iPhone, and it's in the dock and gives quick access to all your apps. Without needing to actually clutter them in folders or in multiple home screen pages, you can throw them all in the app library. So that's been a look at some of the biggest, most notable features on iPadOS 15. But let's look at some of the smaller ones as well. You can now actually airplay your iPad screen to a Mac if it's running the latest version of macOS, Monterey. But once again, it's just kind of like a wireless version of plugging in an external display. Nothing really different here. There's universal control, which lets you use the same mouse and keyboard between your Mac and iPad, kind of like a second screen. And you can directly drag content between devices or copy and paste things. For copying assets designed or drawn on the iPad to the Mac, it's a pretty cool feature. There's of course all the new stuff with FaceTime, like SharePlay and better video calls, and updates to iMessage. There's Focus that filters notifications, Maps which is now crazy crazy detailed. Siri actually feels noticeably faster, but still Siri. And Swift Playgrounds 4, which appears to be a pretty big feature for developers. Basically it's kind of like a mini version of Xcode, I guess, but essentially you can develop apps across iPad and Mac from my understanding. And that's overall iPadOS 15. There's probably a few things I missed, no doubt, but these are the main features that make up this latest update. So here's the bottom line, and there are definitely some lessons we've learned as well along the way. I think the features we got are good, they improve the iPad, but they're not groundbreaking, not huge features. They do however take iPadOS and some of the past annoyances and refine a lot of those things. As someone who has used an iPad Pro pretty much every day for the last few years, that's me, and as someone who has used an iPad Pro as pretty much their main computer for the last few years, that's also me, these are some welcome features and just make the experience smoother and more enjoyable. That's a fact. I think this M1 iPad is great and iOS 15 makes it much better, but it's not that much different in many ways versus the 2020 iPad Pro and the 2018 iPad Pro. I said the exact same thing in both my iPad reviews. But with this event especially, it's a lesson learned to never buy something based on rumors or make purchases or decisions based on leaks. However, we are getting some new software updates for specific apps that actually bring more features that are M1 iPad exclusive, and these are going to start trickling out over the next few months for sure. I'm going to keep this iPadOS 15 beta on my iPad Pro for the next few months, see how the experience evolves, see how things improve, but one thing's for sure though, we've certainly learned quite a bit this year. This video was sponsored by HP Plus, the free upgrade that makes HP's already smart printers even smarter. You get features like auto Wi-Fi connection repair, which solves connection issues automatically, as well as six free months of instant ink delivery. When you're running low on ink, the printer automatically ships over a new box so you can keep on printing with no stress. The HP Smart app also gets smarter with HP+, with features like multi-item scanning, mobile fax, and shortcuts that help you get done more in less time. There's also 24-7 security to keep your printer and files ultra secure. And HP Plus is smarter for the planet. For each page you print, HP plants trees and protects forests. And your used ink cartridges, they'll take them back and recycle them for you at no cost. When you buy a new HP printer like this Office Jet Pro, you can activate HP Plus for free during setup. Like all smart home devices, HP Plus needs an internet connection, HP account, and the connected system only works with original HP cartridges. With HP Plus and an Office Jet Pro, you have a smart printer, smart ink, and smart app. An incredible cloud-connected, smart experience. Learn more about HP Plus at the link in the description. So, what do you think of iPadOS 15? What's your favorite feature? What do you wish that Apple actually added to this software update? Let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.